without any further ado, let's welcome the one, the only, Mara Wilson! Thank you so much, and thank you everybody here. So happy to be here. Yay! Uh, yeah. First and foremost, happy belated birthday. Thank you. It was just my birthday on Monday. I am 30 years old. I'm, I get that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so uh, can I ask what you did to celebrate? Because I know you were uh, you had uh, cupcakes. I saw that. Yes, I brought cupcakes to I mean Sack After Strong first, and uh, yeah, I brought cupcakes to the picket line. So that's what we did, and I celebrated a bunch with family, and uh, it was really fun. Might have gotten a slight case of heat exhaustion or possibly food poisoning. <laughs> One of the <laughs> but two. It was, but we're all good. Everything's good now. So you know, and I'm here and I'm healthy. Yes, that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. Do you have any like typical birthday? Day traditions or maybe even holiday traditions as we're going into Halloween soon? Um, let's see. Usually, uh, lately I've, I've been having picnics on my birthday, uh, but now that I'm back on the West Coast, because when I used to live on the East Coast, one of my closest friends said, Mara, your birthday is always on the most disgusting day of the year because there's always a thunderstorm and it always rained out the picnic and it would always just be really gross and sweaty. But now that I moved back to California where I'm from, we can actually sit outside. It's usually a dry heat, you know, it's oh. not, it won't get rained out at least. But I will say that probably the biggest tradition is, first of all, if you live in a big family, if you have a big family, you get uh, the calls from like every member of your family or the text from every member of your family. But also it's uh, my sister pranking me. Oh, what, what did she do? Uh, okay, so so for a long time, she used to love to like rickroll us, but it wasn't, it, it was the, it was a, um, it was a very strange dance scene from a uh, from an old uh, superhero movie, I will say that that includes the words "now dig on this." Okay. Um, some of you might know what that is. It's kind of infamous. It's the third in a series. I will say that. Okay. Yeah, and she used to love to prank me into clicking on that. And so one year, she got a bunch of my friends to send me things, and one of my dearest friends was like, "Happy birthday, Mara! I'm so sorry. This is what your present's gonna look like, but it broke in the." mail. I'm getting it replaced. And I was like, oh, Max, that's so sweet of you. Don't worry about it. And he's like, yeah, well, here, click on this link and you can at least see what this looks like. And then all of a sudden, now dig on this. Yeah, and they got you. Yeah, and they got me. And so this year, um, this year, what they did is uh, we we used to. So when I was a nanny, I used to. It's kind of a long story, but when I was a nanny, I used to uh, read the books that the kids would read um, whenever I was bored, and uh, and and when like the kids didn't need to be like actively watched, I wasn't you know negligent. Uh, <laughs> and I remember taking some of the. Have any of you ever read the Diary of a Wimpy Kid's books? Yeah, those books are hilarious. And so I told the story in there, and one of them is how. Uh, he talks about getting out of bed a lot at night when he was a kid, and his dad used to read him a book with Shel Silverstein on it, but there's that picture of Shel Silverstein on the back of the book where he looks kind of terrifying. And so he said, to, finally his dad said to him, you know, if you get out of bed again tonight, you might run into Shel Silverstein in the hallway. <laughs> And so I don't know how this came about, but lately my sister and I have been pranking each other with pictures of Shel Silverstein. <laughs> so on my birthday, they even, and her boyfriend even like got a big laminated picture of Shel Silverstein and like hid it in the hallway of our building and was like, Mara, is somebody at the door? Go look there. And I opened the door and Shel Silverstein was in the hallway. Uh, and so for my birthday, they got me a cake and they told me that I was not allowed to look at it. And then they started, they pulled it out. They start singing to me, you know, Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday. They open it up and it says Shell Silverstein, and everybody in the room goes, Shell Silverstein, happy birthday to you. And so now there's video of me going, No, 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 dang it, you got me, no, no. I don't know, maybe you had to be there, but it was very funny for me. I love it. So, do you want like a cool Shell Silverstein fact? Yeah. You know, he wrote music for Johnny Cash. Really? Yeah. That is very cool. Yeah. He, I, I was actually in a musical in elementary school that he did music for. What, what was uh, it? It was called, it, the song was called Helping, and I think it was, the show was called Free to Be You and Me. Okay. I don't know. Yes. Somebody knows it. Yeah, it's Someone's a bit of a hippie. Kind of a, kind of a hippie show, but it was That's super fun. fun. Yeah. So, okay, so you mentioned picnics. Can you tell us, like, what is the ideal picnic? Oh, okay. I like, I personally really like, like, um, 
like a British Tea Party kind of thing. I mean, maybe not actually British because with, with all due respect to any British people that might be in the audience, the food is not always good. But I love little sandwiches, little scones, little baked goods, that kind of thing. That's like my favorite. In fact, one of my favorite places in uh, LA is in Pasadena. It's called, I think, the Tea Rose Garden. And when you go there, you can have rose flavored tea and you can have a little thing that will have all these little like tiny desserts, you know, there'll be like a little key lime pie, a little scone, little sandwiches, and uh, all these things. And there will be there, like you'll see like there'll be a little girl's birthday party, there'll be a grandma's birthday party, there'll be like a, a bridal party, you know, maybe some kind of baby shower or bridal shower. And then there's always like the gothic lolitas who are there. <laughs> And I love that. I love that it's this lovely mix of like grandmas and little kids and like hipsters and gothic lolitas and and like, you know, furries. And I'm just like, this is such such a nice like welcoming environment that everybody is welcome at. I love it. And obviously you get to travel a bit internationally. I get to see all of your travels. What, what's some of your favorite places to travel to? And oh. who does have the best food? Okay, uh, let's see. Um, I really liked Edinburgh. Edinburgh has castles in it and it is so cool. Uh, what a beautiful city. I kind of don't fully believe that it exists even though I spent several days there. It's just kind of a magical place to go. Probably another cool place to go to and I went there when I was very little to promote a movie was Tokyo. I mean, Tokyo, the, the whole city is a nightlight. It was just amazing and everybody was so kind. And I mean, people were really nice to me and I heard a lot of kawaii because I was, you know, a little kid. Although they fussed over my little sister even more because I don't think they saw a lot of, you know, babies with blonde hair there. <laughs> but I will say, actually, this is not my first time in Raleigh. I have family uh, who used to live here. And they live in a different state now, and they very much want to come back here. They really love it here. So uh, you guys live in a very beautiful state. I will say, though, that I, I, I actually, when I was packing, I was like, I have to be careful not to pack blue or red <laughs> because I don't want it to seem like I'm on either side, especially since I actually have allegiance to, allegiance to another school in North Carolina. So it's not Duke, don't worry. Um, <laughs> but uh, any Tar Heels in the audience? Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. And any, what am I trying to say? Oh, no, it's the Spartans. We're the Spartans. Any Spartans in the audience? Yeah, one or two. Uh, not very excited, hands. but that's okay. Yeah, so uh, UNC Greensboro, that's my, that's the, the one that my family went to. That's right. Yeah, so that's where my brother went, and uh, he loved it there. So, yeah, and I have a lot of happy memories of visiting him there. As for best food, oh, my gosh. Um, I don't know. Canada, surprisingly, has a lot of good food, especially Toronto. Um, and I went to Newcastle in England recently, and the British food was not very good, but the Indian food and the Jamaican food were some of the best I've ever had in my life. Like, I was, like, nearly crying because the Indian food was so good. So now, now, let me ask you, speaking of crying, though, like, yeah. do you like to eat food so spicy that you cry, or are you more of, like, a you like to actually be able to enjoy your food? Oh, I'm a wimp. I, I have, like, cried east eating spicy mustard, so I'm kind of a wimp when it comes to food. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Well, uh, to pivot a little bit, because mm -hmm. I mentioned this to you in the hallway, um, we both really like capybaras. I'm just yeah. kind of obsessed. What do you think it is about the wonderful, exotic capybara that just makes them like the It's funny that you say capybara, because I always said capybara. Is it bara or bara? It's, um, it's bara. Yeah, I'm just wrong. Because, because it rhymes with my name. Yeah, there you go. So I always tell people, oh yeah, it's Mara like capybara. Oh, now, now I'll remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll still get around. I'll, I'll try my best. I think they're cute. I, I like that they, they, I think that they're very cute, but I, I feel like they seem very like self-possessed, you know, and very like, like, yes, I know exactly who I am and exactly what I do. And, you know, they always have that sort of side eye. The, and yeah, that's, that's something I like about them. Uh, I like the, the way, I don't know. I just love all those videos of them where it's like, don't forget, Cappy Slay. Uh, they make me incredibly happy. And they're just like giant guinea pigs, essentially. They are like gi giant guinea pigs. And in fact, there is actually an animal called the Mara. I found that out. That is very similar to a capybara, and it's also in South America. 
So, uh, and my friend says it, I think they're cute, but my friend says they kind of look like uh, donkey rabbits. Uh, but you can Google, uh, it's called the Patagonian Cavi, C-A-V-Y, and they're also known as the Mara, and if you look them up, I think they're cute, but they are a little, a little bit strange looking. I'm excited to, yes. to discover a new To animal. discover a new rodent, yes. yes. New, new giant rodent. <laughs> yes, it's a good day. Uh, okay, so to pivot again, uh, one of the things that I saw on your Twitter, and I'm going to quote you, is that you said that you would like to do voiceovers and audiobooks for the rest of your life. Let me live in a booth. I want to die with cans on. Yeah, I love doing, I, I mean, I've been doing audiobooks for uh, a couple years now, and uh, I, I think one of the first ones I did was for something that some of you guys may know called Welcome to Night Vale. Yes. Yeah, definitely welcome to Night Vale fans out there. Uh, I loved working on that. I, I loved being a part of that show. Uh, I loved touring the country with them. It was so cool. So when they were like, hey, will you do an audiobook for us? I was like, yes, I would absolutely love that. But I love doing audiobooks because you can kind of hyper-focus in there, and it's so much fun. And I've also done, you know, some animation as well, which has always been really fun. Wilfred L. and I worked on a project a very long time ago that people still ask about, uh, and I've, I've had a really good time doing it. So I like it, too, because, you know, so many times in Hollywood, you're limited by what you look like. And, you know, I mean, there's, like, I feel like people already don't know what to do with, like, you know, the, the short curve brunettes that they already have <laughs> in Hollywood. So it's kind of like, you know, and you're going to be typecast. And so I feel like it's really fun because if I do an audiobook, I can play multiple different characters. I can play, you know, two different characters that are falling in love with each other. It's really cool. I can be the hero and the villain. And if I'm, you know, doing animation, if I'm doing commercials, if I'm doing any of these things, I can be completely different. So... You know, it's it's funny because if I'm cast in, if, if I'm auditioning for a movie, it's usually like, oh, okay, you're, you know, a short kind of nerdy brunette. But if I'm auditioning for, you know, for voiceover, for uh, for an audiobook, for video games, for something like that, um, I'm usually either, I would say, I, I usually say like it's the three S's. It's like uh, sarcastic, spooky, or sultry. And I'm not actually those things very much in real life, so uh, it's very cool that I get to be something that's completely different than who I am. Acting. Yes. I mean, and who knows, in the future, maybe you'll be like a capybara. That would be, oh my gosh, that would be a dream come true. Yes. Cast me as a capybara, somebody. <laughs> yes. And, and I want to be a capy. yeah, I want to play a capybara. I want to be a vampire. That would be fun, too. A vampire capybara? <laughs> a vampire capybara. That would be cool. Yes. Ooh. I meant separately, but yeah, of that's, course. now that you've given me the idea, somebody, <laughs> yes, yes, I want to be a vampire capybara. <laughs> and you can quote me on that. Do you have a favorite uh, vampire, like from from history or from? Oh, or? Um, let's see. I don't know if I can discuss this, but um, but uh, but uh, from a particular documentary movie, I'll say that. I think some of you might know what I'm talking about. Um, set in a country near Australia that is not Australia. Yeah, some of you will know exactly what that means. Actually, this is kind of fun. It's like we're talking in code. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit about your process of, of recording? Like, do you do any warm-ups, any tongue twisters, anything fun like that? Yeah, I definitely do a lot of uh, vocal exercises. And if you've never watched somebody do a vocal exercise, it is one of the funniest things in the world. Because you will see them doing all kinds of things where they're, like, loosening their jaw. And they're going, like, <laughs> and, and, like, bending over. There's one where you like pretend to be an elephant. There's one where you pretend to like grab grapes off a vine. There's like all kinds of ridiculous breathing things. There's uh, there's like you know doing an elevator where you start from like all the way down in your gut and it's like the elevator is going up and up and into your mouth and into your nose and into your head and going. Oh! It's very strange. Uh, and I also sometimes will sing along uh, with like some of these things that I remember from like choir and classes in college and uh, accent classes, things like that. Um, I Fun fact, I took uh, an accent class in college with Rachel Bloom, who is, yeah, an amazing, amazing actor and writer. She's a friend of mine and comedian. Uh, but yeah, there's one that I like to do. I don't know why, but this is a, a warm, vocal warm-up that I was taught maybe in choir, maybe in college, which was, I am a cow moo. 
And I don't know why, but that's like a good luck one for me. It's fun. You can also do it in Spanish. For some reason, we used to sing it in Spanish. Yo soy una vaca mu. Like the moo's the same. The yeah. moo is the same. In any it's, language. It's just spelled different. It's M O O in English and M U in Spanish. Oh. Yeah, yeah. That's so fun. Yeah, I always I love a good like tongue twister too, but I feel like I'm so bad at them. I some of them I'm very good at. Some of them I'm very not, and I, I have to be careful because uh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, you want, yeah, I totally understand. Oh, okay. So you were mentioning college before as well, and uh, I saw that you were in a one woman show. Can you tell us a little bit about I it? I was. I was in a one woman show called what was it? called I think it was called weren't you that girl yes and because you know people kept saying weren't you that girl in that movie and it was about my past and I talked about how when I was very little all I ever wanted to do was tell stories and act them out and that was my favorite thing and that was kind of how I got into acting uh, I'd also had a brother who'd like been in a few movies and commercials you know little parts things like that and I saw what he was doing and I thought that it looked like fun so I told my mom and she said no you're not going to do that and finally, she made me sit on, on like a mock audition where she pretended to audition me. And then she told me, OK, you were good, but you didn't get the part. And I was like, that's OK. I can just go on another audition. And she was like, all right, well, she can take the rejection. So you know, let's, let's try. And so yeah, and after that, I got, you know, I did commercials. And then eventually, uh, I was called for a movie. And I was cast in it. And from there, things just kind of snowballed. And I was in another movie and another movie and you know I was headlining a movie within two three years and it happened very quickly but that was kind of what it what it was about and it was about you know where my life had gone and and how it had been and I think that a lot of times I had been kind of nervous about talking about it before because I thought that people were either going to think I was conceited or bragging or you know they would think sometimes people would think that I was like trying to hide it like it was a terrible secret I had but uh I didn't, although I do think that, you know, sometimes it was kind of hard when I was young as I was getting older because when I... You know how like when you're a little kid and like you get a little bit older, like your mom's friends or your grandma's friends will be like, I remember when you were this big. I think that's kind of how it felt like, you know, when I was in high school and college, when people would be like, I remember when you were in this movie, when you were this little. And it's like, well, thanks for making me feel like a little kid again. And I don't think I really understood it for the compliment that it was. And I think sometimes, you know, especially when you're young, you don't take these things as compliments. You don't understand. So. I, uh, it took me a while, but I think that that was really fun to do. And it also taught me that I really liked telling stories on stage and being comfortable on stage. And there were times that it was very, very stressful. There were nights when I would just like fall apart in tears after the show. But, you know, mostly I just had a great time. And, and so after that, for several years, I started telling stories on stage. And I did that for a long time at comedy shows in New York and in other places all over the country, really. And it was really fun. I think that, you know, being on stage is still one of my favorite things. I love the connection with an audience. And I think that that's something that can kind of be missing when you're working on film. I still do like working on film because I like being a part of things. But I think that, you know, it's not quite the same as being on stage or even being in, you know, a booth. And when you're in a booth and you're doing animation, you're doing commercials, you're doing audiobooks, everything is in your imagination. And that, I think, is very, very cool. Right. And it's like when you're in front of a live audience and even now, you know, you get the instant gratification, you get the yeah. interaction, you get to feel yeah. the people. Yeah. You, you get to see, you know, you get to see people and you get to hear people and like you get to like feel them there, you know, like their presence there. And that is really cool. Do you have any uh, favorite playwrights or productions? Oh, let's see. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, plays that I was in that I really liked. Um, I remember being in a play called... Uh, Life Underwater that was really fun to be in. What else was really fun? Um, I had a friend who made a piece called uh, The Wayside Documentaries, and it was an adaptation of The Wayside School Books. Anybody ever read The Wayside School Books? Yes. 
And I played Kathy, who didn't like anybody and who nobody liked. And uh, yeah, and she she was very grumpy and she didn't like anyone. And so we all interviewed other people. And you know, one person was Joe, and another person was you know BB Gun, the fastest artist in the West. And there was that was really really fun to do. I would say that was probably that was one of my most fun shows to do. And yeah, a bunch of people in that were uh, went on to like become comedians and things like that, which was very cool. That's awesome. All right, so I do have some questions from the crowd, if it's yes. okay with you. Okay, so I, I cannot confirm if this is a real thing or not, but I'm going to ask it because it seems appropriate. But this is from Ange, I believe. They want to know about your Filipino. I don't know if that's... Oh, okay. what about what about Filipino? They just, how is it going, <laughs> is the question. Um, I've Okay, so I have to admit that my Filipino has slid a little bit, but uh, salamat. Uh, I will say that uh, Filipino culture is definitely something that I, I really do love. I need to get back on this. Honestly, I have been struggling so much to uh, try to pick what language I want to learn, and right now, I'm actually learning a little bit of... Uh, I am, yeah. I'm learning ASL. And uh, yeah, I, I see. So, oh, I think it's, it's um, like, like uh, hold on. Yeah, it's nice to meet you. Yeah, I think that's nice to meet you, although I guess it should probably be like you all. Um, if anybody here knows ASL or uh, knows anybody deaf that wants to uh, explain it to me and correct me, please go right ahead. So that's the thing is there are so many languages I want to learn. And so uh, I'm trying to learn Tagalog, Filipino, which is what my step family speaks. But uh, I also want to, uh, I'd love to become fluent in Spanish. And I would also love to be able to converse in ASL as well. Yeah. So those are things that I'm really trying to do. Uh, and it's funny because I've done a lot of shows uh, in England recently, a lot of cons in England, but British Sign Language is completely different. So it's, yeah, because they, they developed independently. So uh, unfortunately, they're not mutually intelligible and people can't understand them. So a lot of um, deaf people will come to British shows and I'll be like, oh, sorry, if, if this were in the US, I would at least be able to say hello, nice to meet you. But here I can't, sorry. Um, but yeah, I definitely do want to get back to learning Tagalog and, and Filipino. Um, so um, uh, I will say, uh, let's see. Um, oh, I'm trying to I'm trying to think of uh, how to say. Oh, uh, mahal kita. I will say mahal kita to whoever asked that question, which is which is I love you. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. What, what is your process for learning a language? Um, it's Duolingo. <laughs> or there's a very cool app. There's a very cool uh, uh, American Sign Language app called Lingvano that I've been using. And there's also a guy who teaches on there. And his name is uh, Bill Vickers, who teaches on YouTube. And he is great. Uh, and uh, the, the app that I'm using, it's funny, though, because if you go on Duolingo or any of those apps, you will be, uh, <laughs> they always ask you, like, really silly questions questions or they'll, they'll teach you how to say really strange things like I don't know if anybody's ever tried that but it'll say things like you know like today I put a banana in my hair and you'll learn how to say that in French and <laughs> and I, I am happy to say that they actually have that on the on the American Sign Language uh, <laughs> app as well like one of the first things I learned how to say was uh, I have a deaf baby and a hearing monkey um, and it keeps going back to like this one woman. It's always the same woman that they show, and she'll say something like "monkey throw ball," you know, you know, "monkey wants a drink," and you know, uh, water usually, uh, and and things like that. And I'm just like, this woman and her monkey, like, what a life they must live. Yeah. I, I would like their side quest. It's funny, like when I went to college, I studied sign language. Unfortunately, yeah. like I don't remember that much of it, but I went to school in Orlando, uh, and yeah. so they would have certain nights at at Disney and Universal where you can go and converse with everybody and it was so cool. That's really cool. Yeah, it was really neat. Yeah, it is. It is. One of my friends is a coda and she's like, oh yeah, I've lost some of my language too and it is, it is with languages, they're all kind of a use it or lose it kind of thing, unfortunately. Well, good yeah. luck. I'm so excited to Thank hear about you. your uh, sign language journey. Thank you. Okay, so uh, Jamie wants to know, what is your favorite book? 
Oh, good question. Um, I feel like a lot of my favorite books are actually plays, uh, because I spent so much time reading plays when I was, you know, in high school and college. So uh, I really loved. Um, and one play that, like, w when I first read, I was like, "This is so boring. I can't stand it." And then I saw a production of it that made me cry and changed my life. Is actually Our Town. I I love Our Town. Uh, yeah, I will defend Our Town. Um, usually the last. I'm, I'm trying to think because usually what I try to do is I, I don't know if I can. I mean, one of my all-time favorite books growing up was Good Omens. Um, loved Good Omens. And, of course, also Hitchhiker's Guide. And uh, I actually worked with somebody. I worked with uh, with Simon Jones, who's the original Arthur Dent. And that was very, very cool. And his son and I were very young when we, you know, I was like six. So we used to play house and we'd pretend to get married. And so I remember telling, like, somebody that I dated in college that. And he was like, oh, you're Arthur Dent's daughter-in-law? So, yeah, that's nerd. That's that's very, very nerdy of her. A very nerdy reference for you all. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, probably the last, like, really good book I read lately was... Um, um, well, this isn't the name of the series, but the first book is uh, The Three-Body Problem. Terrifying. Oh, my gosh. One of the scariest books I've ever read, but also fascinating. Book about aliens and, uh, and first contact. Um, there was a fantasy book I read that I really liked called Spinning Silver. That was a cool book. I liked that book a lot. Um, let's see. Uh, some of the audiobooks that I've done, I've been very, very happy to read. Um, I... Let me think. There was one called One for All, which was a gender-swapped story uh, a, a, a based on the Three Musketeers. That was a really fun book that I did an audiobook for. And it was about disability, too. It was a, a girl in it who has uh, a similar disability to the health condition I have, POTS, uh, uh, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, and she gets stronger and stronger by fencing, and eventually goes off to join uh, a, a band of musketeers. Amazing. So that was a really fun book. So yeah, I usually like to mention the books that I've read recently because I I don't know. I have so many favorite books that I don't even know where to begin. But apparently, nothing from Shel Silverstein. <laughs> so that's okay. That's that's totally fine. Um, okay, so <laughs> he is a great author. Yeah, no. He's He's, he's great. Okay, so uh, I'm going to change this question a little bit, Christy. Um, let's talk about maybe some of your favorite trends from the 90s. Oh, favorite trends from the 90s. Yes. Okay. Um, I kind of miss uh, I kind of miss the butterfly clips. That's so funny. <laughs> That's funny. I don't know funny. why. They never looked good on me, but, I, but they were cute. I remember thinking that they were very cute. Uh, I do have a tiny bag backpack since that fad is back in. And it's funny because you look like a child when you're wearing a backpack, but I'm honestly getting them. I'm wearing a backpack because I'm getting older and I pinched a nerve in my neck. And so it's better to have a backpack than a purse. A so yeah, ironically, it's uh, because I'm getting older <laughs> that I had to get a tiny backpack to put everything in. And yeah, let's see. Anything else? Um, let's see. I, I really loved like a lot of the British pop music. Mm from the 90s that was like my favorite I had three older brothers who were always listening to like Blur and Oasis and Elastica and all of that so that was definitely something that I loved and uh, and I'm sorry but let's please never go back to low-waisted jeans <laughs> Let's never do that again. Let's stick with the, with the 90s middle waist or high waist, okay? Yes. Because we lived through the low waisted things. How, and how did we do it? I don't, I, I hated it. How did Even we at the sit? time, I thought this was terrible. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so please let's not go back to that. Right, that, that's, I'm, I'm with you. Um, what, do, what are you listening to now? Let's see, music wise? Oh, I'm, I'm a big Broadway nerd. Yes, let's go. Yeah. What you got? I'm a big Broadway nerd. In fact, one of my good friends is on tour with Beetlejuice right now. I just saw it. Did you? I just saw it. You yeah. probably saw my friend Who? in it. Uh, he, he played Otho. Oh, love Otho. Yes, he was wonderful. Six, and yes. Yes, yeah, he's, great. Yeah. he's great. He's um, great. And then, let's see, what other ones? I really liked Hades Town. Uh, I have that. Uh, let's see, other musicals that I've listened to. Um, which ones have I listened to? I've gotten back into... I, I have Honestly, I have a musicals playlist that I think is about eight hours long. Like... 
this is like a whole like East Coast road trip, this playlist. Uh, I absolutely love that. Um, I, I don't keep up with like modern music as much, but I will say I do love Billie Eilish. Yeah. Um, and who else do I really like that's, that's out now? Um, I'm trying to think of who's new. Uh, my sister will always like try to play Harry Styles around me. And I do, I do like it. And it's funny because my sister's way more into music and so, than I am. And she'll be like, oh, yeah, I was trying to get you into this, actually. Um, so let's see. Who else? Um, I do enjoy BTS. I okay, mean, yes. how can you not, we, really? Who, who's your bias? Oh, um, I think V. OK. Or is it is it V? Or is it who is it v, that? V, yeah. No, it's um, who's the one that's very like weird and out of the box? I'm trying to remember who it is. I There's do. one who like they always always is like the strange one. He loves Panda Express. Ooh. Um, yeah, that's that's mine. Every time I hear him sing, I'm like, that's him. That's the but, one. The but Panda yeah, Express he's one. mine. Cool. He's mine. Cool. Yeah, I, I think it's V. I think it's V. Although every now and then I'll learn a, a one about another one of them, and I'll be like, oh, actually, I really like him too. They're all he's kind really of really adorable. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm I'm actually I'm going to see. Um, have you heard anything from Back to the Future on Broadway yet? No, not yet. Yeah, I'm but, going to see it, uh, but but I've heard about it, but. I haven't heard the music yet. Yeah, I'm so excited. Yeah, yeah, there's so many. I still need to see Six and, you know, listen to yet. it. I've heard good stuff about Six and uh, and yeah, there's there's a whole bunch that uh, I really love. I'm I'm definitely a big Broadway person. I want a road trip with you and that Broadway album. I oh, yeah. It. It's it's, you know, it's got everything from like Sondheim to, you know, it, it's got everything from like Sondheim to like, you know, to 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 um, you know, the things that came out 50 years ago to the things that came out five years ago to the things that came out five months ago. It's its all my favorite. And if you come up to me at my booth and you want to ask me about musicals, I will talk to you about musicals. Yes. Good to know. And if you don't want to hear me talk about musicals, I completely understand. <laughs> That's fair. So we have about 10 minutes left. Um, there's a couple other questions. I'm going to ask this one. If you don't feel comfortable answering, that is completely mm -hmm. fine. Um, a couple of people wanted to know about Robin Williams, if there's any short uh, stories you can share and if he was absolutely wonderful um, he he really was I mean he would make like little hand puppets that would talk to you and you, okay keep in mind that I was five years old but he would say things like you know I don't like you you smell like poop and he'd have another hand puppet go like oh well there's no toilet paper at my house and I thought that was hilarious because I was five and he would do things like you know there's one uh, the time we had uh, an animal you know there we had a, I think a pony and he fed the pony oats out of his hat and then turned to me with a hat and said, want to wear it? Uh, <laughs> pony, sl pony slobber and all, and he would make his carpet bag bark like a dog, and he would do just the most ridiculous things, and he could be kind of shy and quiet. He was actually a pretty introverted person, I think, but he would just kind of come alive when he was performing, and I, I consider myself very lucky to have known him, and actually, he also liked music, uh, musicals, and I know this because uh, my mom always loved to talk about the time he asked me what my favorite music was, and I started naming different musicals, and he started singing There Is Nothing Like a Dame while dressed as Mrs. Doubtfire. So he was a man dressed as a woman singing about how there is nothing like a woman. Yeah. What a beautiful memory. Yeah. And also, a couple people wanted to know about Danny DeVito. Ah, uh, yes, my favorite that. uncle. <laughs> uh, Danny's the greatest. Danny is. I have. I have so many happy memories of Danny, and he, he has been so kind to me over the years. I mean, he spoiled the heck out of me. He gave me like, I, I had a birthday that uh, I, I, I celebrated a birthday with him, and he got me um, a giant cake in the shape of a red hair ribbon, and. And he got me, uh, he got me, and, and like my family, because we, we did not grow up super wealthy. We had, you know, five kids and, in my family. And he got me uh, um, an American Girl doll and all of the outfits for her, which my family couldn't afford. So I was thrilled to get that. And he got me, and there were a bunch of balloons in the shape of a rainbow. And, uh, and like, I think like a Ben and Jerry's ice cream truck. Yeah, he spoiled me rotten. And, and I remember I was, 
was doing publicity for for something, and I had to go. I was going between uh, Toronto and New York, and when I flew to New York, he gave me a gift certificate uh, to uh, FAO Schwartz, the the toy store, and so I went back to Canada with just like boxes and boxes and bags and bags of Barbies, because you know I was still a, I was still a kid, you know I was still like eight or nine years old, so uh, yeah I still wanted to play with Barbies, and so and he took care of my family when we were going through a really rough time, both before and after, and yeah we still say in my family that he kind of saved us, so he is as genuinely sweet. And I, and I talked to him just a couple weeks ago, and he was just as kind and sweet as he always has been. That's, see, that, that's what I, I like hearing the most, is that somebody is kind. Like, yes. That goes such a long way. It does. It really does. And that warms my heart so much. Yeah. Um, so my, my final question for you, because you know obviously we're walking around this convention, and so many people are just dressed up. And obviously, we've seen yeah. a lot of really you know, red hair bows, we'll say. Yes. Um, so let's say that you had the opportunity to cosplay for a convention. What would you want? to be? I have a, um, I mean, I think I can say this because it's not something, well, I mean, this might be dicey, but I, I, uh, I do have a very good Jackie Daytona costume. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, that I've that I've uh, I have worn uh, in the past uh, for Halloween and for uh, you know uh, costume parties and things like that. You have I, the hat. I have the hat. I specifically bought the hat and the jeans and uh, and the toothpick. Uh, yeah, I specifically bought that, and that is one of my favorite things to wear. And I mean, my hair is about the same length, you know. So so yeah, and. Uh, and I have been to Tucson, Arizona, so, so yeah, that's probably my favorite. Who was that? Yeah, that was that's one that that was a really fun one. I also had um, had uh, Moira from uh, from Schitt's Creek. Yeah, I also did that. So yeah. Do you have a good like Moira accent? That has to be that's a the Moira. The, I, I can't quite do the Moira accent, but it's but you know I did my, I did have my baby. friends take a yeah the baby and and I I, I, I can I can kind of do it because it's just very, it's very precise and it's very breathy, I think. But yeah, it's, like it's it. not quite, yeah, it's not quite. I can do some impressions, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's, that's not quite one that I can do. Don't worry, I don't have any more impressions for you. <laughs> you are all set. This all has right. been so much fun. I know we have a photographer that's going to take a big group picture of us, but before we do yes. that, any uh, final thoughts you want to leave us with here this afternoon? Um, y'all have been so great. I'm loving Raleigh. Thank you so much. And yes, I did say y'all on purpose. I, I say y'all too. Yeah. Well, I'm from LA. I say you guys. Oh, no, but right. but when I'm here, you know, it's y'all. When in when in North Carolina, do as the North Carolinans do. There you go. Our yes. final accent right there. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs>